All right, everyone. As you all know, CNCF is a rapidly growing community, and we will be sharing some exciting updates today from our projects. But we have something new, and we're trying it out, and I'm excited to share it with you all. That's right. This KubeCon and CloudNativeCon, we wanted to give our graduated projects the opportunity to share their updates with you themselves. So sit back and watch some familiar and new faces from the community as they provide project updates on our graduated projects. Hello, KubeCon. I'm Marek Sharkovich. Hi, this is Benjamin Wang. Hello, I'm Sadio Zala. And this is quick uh, updates from etcd project. Since last KubeCon, we released multiple patch releases with uh, two important ones, uh, please check them out. We had two important announcements about uh, critical bugs, so please uh, also look into them. Uh, the project currently has three priorities, release qualification, test stabilization, and automatic inconsistency detection. To learn more about the project, please see us at the maintainer stock and at city kiosk. Thank you. My name is Deepti Sigredi. I'm a maintainer and project lead for Vitus. We have just announced the general availability of Vitus release 15. This is the most consequential release of the past two years. There are two things I want to highlight about this release. The first is VT Orc, an automatic cluster management component. In the past, Vitus users had to depend on a third party integration to detect and recover from failures. VT Orc now does that natively. The second is VT Admin, which is a new UI for Vitus. This removes our dependence on an old, outdated UI that was no longer maintainable. We have two talks here at KubeCon. I invite you to attend them to learn more about Vitus. Twenty twenty two has been an exciting year for boring infrastructure projects like ContainerD. Earlier this year, we released ContainerD one point six, our first long term stable release. We've also just released the first beta for ContainerD 1.7, which brings in exciting new ways to integrate with ContainerD, including a new way of managing sandboxes for VM-based runtimes, a new extension point for controlling image pulls, and CRI updates supporting new features in Kubernetes, like user namespaces and vertical pod resizing. We're also planning our 2.0 release, our most boring release to date, mostly focused on feature deprecation, API stability, and long-term maintainability. If ContainerD interests you, watch our talks at this KubeCon, and join our community meetings to hear the latest of what's going on in the project. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Xu Ding Zhao, a staff engineer at Namada and a core maintainer of Caverno. Caverno is a policy engine designed for Kubernetes. It addresses a wide range of security and automation use cases. With Caverno, you can prevent misconfigurations and enable multi-tenancy, verify image signatures, and more. The Caverno community has around 200 sample policies to help you get started. In the past six months, Caverno published eight new releases and the community has grown rapidly. There are 13 mentees who have participated in the LFX mentorship program. Join the Caverno sessions and visit us at caverno.io. Hello, KubeCon. My name is Ulim Vasilev and I'm the community manager for Harbor. In the last six months, we have two new releases. In 2.5, we have integrated with Cosign, which gives you the possibility to sign your images and later on to verify them so you can have more secure environments. In 2.6, we have a new caching mechanism, which provides better performance when you have concurrent image pulling, a long required CV exporter, which allows you to consume your CVE data outside of Harbor, and we have implemented a new GDPR compliant process for deleting users. Those are just the highlights. If you like our project, scan the QR code. Our community is there waiting for you to help you out and help you out with your Harbor journey. I hope I can see you in our next community meeting. Thank you very much. Hi there, my name is William Morgan. I'm the CEO of Point and one of the creators of Linkerd. Welcome to the KubeCon Detroit Linkerd update. 
So most excitingly, in August, we shipped Linkerd 2.12, which adds two major features to Linkerd. The first is route-based policy, which allows you to authorize or deny requests based on HTTP verbs, methods, and other features. Number two, we add support for the Gateway API, so you can configure this route-based policy based on Gateway API types. Now, coming up later this year, we've got 2.13, which will add client-side policy, including circuit breaking, header-based routing, and a couple other exciting things. We have a great conference for you, a lot of Linkerd talks, and a lot of Linkerd maintainers in attendance, so please come find us at the booth. Have a great conference. Here are the highlights for Jaeger from 2022. We added service performance monitoring, which provides native integration with Prometheus for performance monitoring use cases. We move closer to open telemetry by adding native OTLP support and replacing the Jaeger SDKs with the open telemetry SDKs. We added adaptive sampling into open telemetry and Jaeger, which allows for some very interesting use cases around sampling. We added flame graph visualizations instead of just the table view. And you can learn about these and much more with myself, Jonah Cowell and Joe Elliott on the Jaeger Maintainer session, Wednesday, October 26th, 4.30 to 5. Hello, this is Alice, one of the maintainers of Emissary Ingress. Over the last six months, we've had seven new releases of Emissary. And in that time, we've updated the version of Go the project is built on from version 1.17 to version 1.19. We've also updated the version of Envoy that the project is built on and they match outdated 1.17, the latest version. We've spent a lot of this time working to increase the stability and performance and find new ways to improve the quality of life for our users. We've also released major version 3.0, which added support for HTTP 3 to downstream clients. We look forward to finding new ways to make Emissary Ingress the number one choice for an open source API gateway. This is the Open Policy Agent and Gatekeeper project announcements. I'm Peter. I'm Rita. For the Open Policy Agent, we have a number of new language features like contains and ifs, a number of uh, new features in the project as well, like rich metadata annotations, and a number of performance updates uh, uh, and tools like disk storage and delta bundles. For Gatekeeper, we have the new Gator CLI that helps you test your policies and test the Kubernetes objects against those policies in SLI. Uh, and for external data feature, now you can create policies that talk to the external data providers outside the cluster. Now you can get early rejection of workload resources like deployments. And uh, now there's a new website for Gatekeeper policies and we're on Artifact Hub. Uh, performance improvements, a major speed up, as well as reduction in CPU memory. Go try it. And join the project today. You can find us on Slack, Twitter, LinkedIn, all over the place. I hope to see you there. Bye. Hi, Kyokon. My name is Eduardo Silva. I'm the CEO of Calitia and the creator of FluentBit, which is a sub-project of the CNCF under the umbrella of FluentD. And today we are announcing FluentBit 2.0 that comes with full support with logs, metrics, and traces, plus full compatibility with OpenTelemetry and Prometheus. It also comes with a high performance and a new way to query your data. Also, we added TLS support for input plugins, and now developers can extend FluentBit by using Golang or Wasm. Don't forget to stop by Fluentbit booth and grab your new Fluentbit 2.0 shirt. All right. Thank you so much. Can round of applause for all the updates. That was, that was pretty awesome. It's happy to see more faces on stage. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to what people will do next time as well for, for this kind of update. So let's see how creative people get. Uh, so, as all of us are aware, Russia has continued to attack Ukraine since earlier this year. Uh, many brave Ukrainians, as well as others from around the world, have been fighting daily to protect themselves, their families, and their countries. One of those is our, own very, our very own Ihor Boretsky, who many of you know very well. We were honored this past May, during KubeCon Cloud Native Con Europe, that Ihor was able to join us via video even though he was on active military duty. We continue to be moved by your bravery, as well as everyone else's who are involved in this war, including the human rights organizations that are helping folks through this. 
We are very honored today that somebody from one of these organizations, RASM, can join us to talk about their efforts and how we can all continue to help Ukrainians. And we are ecstatic that they are joined today in person by Ihor. So please welcome Ihor and Dima. Hello, KitCon. So, it's been a while since I've been here, since I met you all 12 months ago at Los Angeles. And it's all the eight months when my home was invaded. Eight months when I had to step away from my beloved job and the community that I love. Eight months since I began serving in the armed forces of Ukraine. Well, that, sounds, that doesn't sound like a long time, right? So, yeah, but in those, those months, uh, in those eight months, we have uh, needlessly lost more than 100,000 Ukrainians in the war. Millions of Ukrainians have been displaced and forced to flee their homes. And when they do return, they might not have a home to go because so, so many buildings have been destroyed. And this is why your ongoing support is so important to us, to everybody in Ukraine. So Priyanka spoke, spoke about finding the hope in the hard times. When I joined the armed forces, I tweeted that we need some help with supplies, with some other stuff, and within minutes, hundreds of messages of support and offers of help poured from you, from the, from the cloud native community. And by the fact that uh, Operation Varetsky, the nonprofit that is being run by my friends, has been established just after one tweet. You've started organizing the supply to us, and all, all just because you saw the tweets asking for assistance. And now it's grown into all volunteer nonprofit organization. Last time at the most recent KubeCon Cloud Native Con in Valencia, you have raised more than $20,000 for them and for the Razum for Ukraine Foundation. And all of your donations went directly to helping people of Ukraine who need, who need it the most. Well, so the brutal invasion is not over. But guess what? We are not done either. And Ukraine is standing strong. We have the global community behind us, and your ongoing support means everything to us. Now I'd like to introduce you to Dima, who's a board member of the Razum for Ukraine Foundation, who will tell more about the initiatives that the Razum for Ukraine is doing these days. Hi, I'm Dima. I'm a volunteer and a board member of a nonprofit organization, Razum for Ukraine. But I'm also someone just like you. I'm a cybersecurity professional. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm just like Ihor. But the only difference is, as a Ukrainian American, I'm privileged to live in this country. And uh, to me, it symbolizes freedom. Uh, today, I'd like to talk to you about Ukraine, which is the new beacon of freedom. Freedom. Recently, I went to Ukraine on a trip, and um, what struck me the most were, was how calm and how determined people there are. Uh, despite daily air sirens, despite shellings any time, day or night, um, they're determined to win. They're determined to have a better life, determined to build a strong democratic country. I want to tell you about the project called Veteranius. Uh, we started back in 2020 to support Ukrainian veterans. Uh, because without veterans, there would be no Ukraine. Um, since then, we were able to train more than 500 people uh, from zero to 60 in IT. Many of those people found their first jobs in IT. 
Uh, but unfortunately, when the full-scale Russian invasion happened, everything stopped, and many of those people, if not all, went, went to the front lines. Sadly, many of them died. But I'm here to keep their memory alive and to encourage support of this critical project. Let me ask you, how, um, what do companies like Grammarly, GitLab, PeopleAI have in common? I'll give you a hint. They were all founded by Ukrainians, and um, we need more of that. Ukraine has a lot of untapped talent and incredibly skilled and motivated uh, labor force. Um, we can help bring it to the world. You all have a, a chance to change the world. So here's how you can help it, one of these simple ways. Uh, you can donate the money, check out the QR code. Uh, it'll take you to a website with a description of the project and a chance to, uh, to donate. You can donate new used hardware, software, uh, so students can use it. You can also donate your time and get engaged if you'd like to be a mentor. Thank you again. My name is Dima. Check out the QR code and come talk to us afterwards. All right. Hold on. One more minute of, of our time here. It's announcement time. So I'm thrilled to announce that the Linux Foundation has partnered with the Horizon for Ukraine Foundation on the Veteranus Project which helps to retrain retired veterans for careers in tech. Later this year, a few Linux Foundation courses will be translated to Ukrainian, including the Introduction to Linux, Introduction to Kubernetes, and other courses. And we want to offer these, uh, these courses as, uh, not only to the veterans, but also to their close family members to the families of the first responders and defenders, to the young adults, to children of those heroes, their spouses, and as well as for the, the disabled veterans. Please keep us in your thoughts. The road ahead is far from easy, but together we are stronger. Thank you for your, all your support. Slava Ukraine.